Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to West Virginia Astronomy. My name is Jonathan and I do videos all about astrophotography and astronomy from my backyard here in Sinks Grove, West Virginia. I haven't really done a whole lot of deep space imaging here lately. Um, we're basically in the heart of galaxy season right now. So honestly, I really don't feel like shooting these tiny little galaxies through my 450 millimeter telescope. So I figured uh, this would be a good time to kind of just practice some different things. One of those is being time-lapse photography. I just kind of wanted to show what I was doing. I just thought it might be helpful to some other people to show just how easy this can be done. So. In this video, I will show you how to shoot and edit an astrophotography time lapse. This is the easiest way to create a time lapse that I've found. And yeah, we're gonna jump right into it here. So we'll need a few items, a tripod, a DSLR and a fast prime lens, an intervalometer to control the image session, and a dew heater. And yes, you need a dew heater. The thing that I found that works the best with time lapses is when you have something moving in the scene, that be a string of cars across a busy city or you know clouds rolling by, in my case the night sky. So during the night you'll see the stars trailing across the sky over a long period of time. Generally you want to use a fast prime lens and this is the Samyang 14mm f2.8 and I'm using the Canon 80D and a decent camera for a beginner. I use it all the time. Um, I figured it would be pretty fun to set this clock here and watch the time go by and watch the Milky Way rise above the clock. So we're gonna check where the Milky Way is gonna rise. So we can see right here, see when the core will be right above our clock here. See how we can uh, really check out what the picture's gonna look like here. It'll rise right behind the clock, continue on all night long. And about 5 a.m., it gets daylight. So, cool little app, guys. That's called Photo Pills, and it'll give you an augmented reality of the night sky. And I use it all the time, basically for every night image I do. Because we'll know what time it is, because the clock will tell us. So, fun little test, guys. Uh, I'm pretty excited, so. Yeah. What I'm going for in this time lapse, uh, I think I'm going to focus more on the clock and have the sky a little bit blurry and hopefully it'll look pretty cool. The clock will turn throughout the night and the last thing you want to happen during your time lapse is for your lens to fog over. So I made sure to bring this lens heater. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on. So I got the dew heater on. Um, then you also want to use an intervalometer <coughs> or some way to run a series of exposures on your camera. So what this will allow me to do is to take a set of exposures and I can put a gap in between each exposure if I want to. I'll probably do about 60 second exposures and we'll just let it run for pretty much all night long and hopefully get a pretty cool time lapse. So. You also want to make sure that you have a clean battery and a fresh memory card. Um, I'm going to go ahead and format my memory card so make sure that it's clean. And I got a nice 120 gig SD card in here. So. So after I got everything composed exactly how I wanted and focused on the clock, here's the composition I ended up with and it looks pretty good. You also want to go into the camera here and change your aspect ratio to 9 by 16 and I'm using ISO 1600 and making sure everything's balanced and level. Um, 
the intervalometer, I set it to 60 seconds and there's a five second gap in between each exposure and hopefully we can get three or four hundred. Alright guys, here we are on the computer. I'm going to start by opening up Photoshop here and we're going to locate our files and we're just going to, we're just going to open them straight into Photoshop here. Because they're raw files, Adobe Camera Raw will actually open them and we're able to make adjustments this way inside of Adobe Camera Raw. So what I like to do is find the middle picture here of the sequence and I just make these minor adjustments here using the sliders here nothing too in-depth um, then I copy and paste all the settings to the entire sequence so they're all the same I did have to kind of work on the last few pictures individually here just where it was getting daylight out so you might have to tweak the ends here but other than that um, you can just copy and paste the settings and now we're gonna go up here and we're gonna click save and we're going to save these as JPEGs and you basically just want to make sure JPEG selected and yeah I leave basically everything the same I made a folder here that says JPEGs and that's where we're going to save them at so everything else just stays the same we click next and now it is going to save these files down here as JPEGs and once that finishes we're going to open up Photoshop again now we're going to go over here to scripts and we're going to load files into stack so we're going to click browse and now we're going to choose our JPEGs and we're just going to select all of them and we're going to open these up now we click OK here it will load all of these images now into a stack. Each image was on top of the next one. And this takes a few minutes once it finishes. Now we're gonna go up here to Windows. We're gonna choose Timeline. And we're gonna go over here. We're gonna click the top layer here and holding down Shift, we're gonna click the bottom layer. With all of them selected, we're gonna go over here and click Create Video Timeline. That puts them onto the timeline here. Now we're gonna go over here and we're gonna click this little box here. And we're gonna go up here to convert frames, make frames from clips. So after you select that, we're gonna go over here to the first layer here and click this little video box here. And we're gonna click new video group from clips. So now we're going to click our down arrow here. We're going to go down to the first layer here and we're going to shift click to where they're all selected. Now, because it's actually uh, in reverse right now, this is the last frame, but it actually has it in the front. So we want to go up here and choose layer. And we're going to go down here to arrange and reverse. That will put our time lapse in the correct order so now we go up here to file export and we want to click render video here this is where you title your time lapse and we're going to call this clock time lapse for video Okay, and we want to make
make sure H.264 is selected here. And we want to make sure that the size is 1920 by 1080. So what we want to do, we want to make sure that HDTV 1080p is selected here. So click that. And now it's 1920 by 1080. And I did choose 24 frames a second, but on the original time lapse, I did 30 frames a second. I think it turned out a little better. So we're done. That's all there is to it. Um, once it finishes, you'll be able to open the file here. And here's our finished time lapse. So we're going to check it out here. Yeah, this is the 30 frames a second time lapse, which it turned out great. So what we can also do is go in here and we can slow down the speed of the time lapse and that will give us a little more length on our time lapse here. So here it is at half speed and we're able to get a 20 second time lapse instead of a 10 second time lapse. So that's pretty much it guys. Um, that's all there is to it. It's real quick and easy. Um, best way I've found to do this by far. And yeah, turns out great.